Hello world, Calc Programmer one here. Today I want to do a quick status update on the Sonics QMK project. This project is an attempt to bring the QMK open source keyboard firmware to a number of low cost, readily available mechanical keyboards. And the thing that all these keyboards have in common is they're using chips that are ultimately made by Sonics, um, the SN32 series of processors. So I did a video a few months ago about installing it on the Red Dragon K556 and a few others, the K552 and the Ajaz AK33. Um, but one thing, one keyboard that's very popular that we didn't support was the Glorious GMMK. Uh, this keyboard's been requested quite a bit, but due to uh, difference in design, we have so far been unable to support the GMMK. Um, note that this isn't the GMMK Pro. Uh, the Pro supports QMK natively. This is the regular GMMK, the non-Pro. And it, up to this point, has not supported QMK firmware. Uh, and that has changed. We do have it working, at least for certain models. Um, one particular model, I should say. The difficulty in bringing this up, uh, the GMMK, is that it uses a different chip. So the Red Dragons, the Ajaz, and pretty much all the keyboards we currently support in Sonics QMK use the Sonics SN32F248 or 248B uh, chips. Um, both of these chips are ARM Cortex M0 microcontrollers, and they have 64 kilobytes of flash memory and 8 kilobytes of RAM. So it's not a ton, especially not compared to your modern computer, but it's a microcontroller. Um, and, and it's reasonable specs for a microcontroller. And it allowed us to fit uh, the QMK firmware and buffer all of the LED states. So basically you have to store the RGB value of every LED on the keyboard in the, in the memory, in the RAM. Uh, and that eats up some of the RAM space. And so this, the GMMKs, they use a different chip, also from Sonics. It's the SN32F268 instead of 248. Normally you would think, oh, it's a bigger number. That means it's better, right? Well, not in this case. The 268 is sort of a cut-down, limited version of the 248. And the 268 only has 2 kilobytes of RAM, and it only has 32 kilobytes of flash. And actually, the bootloader eats into that flash space a bit, which gets a little weird. And so uh, I'll explain a little more into the video why that's an issue for us. But that RAM, that 2K of RAM, that's been a big limitation. Um, we can't fit all of QMK and all of our LED states and the ability to communicate with OpenRGB into that 2K at least we thought we couldn't but some interesting things have happened on the Sonics QMK Discord recently and a user by the name of Glory uh, managed to go through and optimize the RAM usage quite a bit and so we are now able to get um, Sonics QMK working with the OpenRGB communication on this keyboard. Now note that I say this keyboard. This is a GMMK Full, but it's a GMMK Full 2021 variant. So the box doesn't change, the outer design doesn't change, but over the years they've modified this keyboard. They've changed the internals. And so mainly it's the LED driver chip. Uh, for a while they were using an I2C chip, actually two of them, uh, to drive the LEDs, and now they've moved to a better, faster SPI, SPI based chip, and uh, that's what's in this particular one, and I'm going to show you uh, the range of serial numbers to look for if you want to get one with that chip, plus I'm going to take it apart and show you what you should look for. So if you buy one of these, uh, you'll have to go out and buy one, a fairly recent one, I bought this at Micro Center last week. Um, then take it apart, make sure you have the right chips, and only then, if you have exactly this keyboard, are you good to flash 
our new QMK firmware port. So here's the keyboard taken out of the box and I have already messed with it so uh, it's not it has some switches in it not all the switches this particular keyboard is the bare bones kit which is sold without the switches but I believe the GMMK is the same whether you get the pre-assembled one or the bare bones uh, they're both going to be the same PCB but what really matters is the serial number so if we flip it over and we look right here on the back I'll try and zoom in there you'll see the serial number and so this one is SS121160 and then some more numbers um, this is the number I've been told to look for uh, is this SS121160 I think boards that are in that range that have that starting code should be good to run our QMK port um, I actually went through a whole bunch of these at Micro Center. Uh, I was sitting on the floor in the keyboard aisle taking each one out of the box. I mean, a lot of them didn't have the sticker on them, so I was able to open up the box. And I looked through like five or six of them before I found one with a, a six here. A lot of them were SS12115, so I was just looking for one with the six. Uh, eventually, I found this one, and... Uh, the Micro Center guy asked me what I was doing and maybe thought I was crazy, but I got one. So that's what you want to look for is uh, that part number. But then the other thing to look for is uh, I would say it's a smart idea to confirm by looking at the actual chip on the board. So this involves taking the screws out, so let's just go ahead and take the screws out here. Um, it's not too difficult, but there are several screws on this board. Now it comes apart. So I'm going to swing that around here. So I'm gonna, I took the camera off the tripod to try and get a clearer picture of these chips. So if your keyboard is supported, it should have these VS12L17A chips. It should have two of those. VS12L17A. Those are the LED drivers. And then in the middle here, we should have a VS11K13A. And that is our main processor. That is a rebranded Sonics SN32F268 processor. I've put the keyboard back together. And the first thing I'm going to do is show you what happens when I plug it in. And as you can see, it does the spiral pattern, the same spiral we saw on the Red Dragon K556. And the reason for that is the GMMK, like the Red Dragon, is based on the eVision firmware, uh, at least for its stock firmware. Now the Red Dragon is eVision, but it uses the VS11K09A chip, which is the Sonics 248B. And this uses the VS11K13A, which is a 268. So even though they are both similar in terms of their stock firmware, they're not directly compatible because they're using two different chips and two different LED drivers. But the behavior of the stock firmware is similar. We should have the um, ability to switch different modes using the function key and then one of these six keys and pressing them multiple times goes through different patterns. Um, this is 
the behavior that we've expected from eVision keyboards uh, for, from the Red Dragons. And as is, it will work with the eVision controller and OpenRGB. But again, it doesn't have direct mode. It doesn't have uh, the ability to update without saving the changes. And so it's not going to work with any of our effect engines or audio visualizers, game integrations, none of that sort of thing. And that's why we need QMK on it, is to be able to do those things. So now I want to show you how to go ahead and install our QMK port, our Sonics QMK firmware for this keyboard. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is using a different chip, the 268, in that this chip only has 32K of flash memory versus the 64K of flash memory found on the other chips, the 248 and 248B, powering the Red Dragons and some of the other boards we support. The main issue here is that while the 248 chips are practically unbrickable because their bootloader resides in an entirely separate area of the flash that can't be overwritten, that's not the same case on the 268. The top two kilobytes of flash memory on the 268 chip contain part of the chip's onboard bootloader and they are able to be erased from the flash programming. That unfortunately makes this a rather risky operation if you're careless with it. Because if you overwrite those top two kilobytes of flash, you can no longer get into bootloader mode, which means the chip is essentially bricked. You will be unable to recover, even by taking it apart and shorting out the boot pin uh, there's nothing to boot into, and so it will not work. You can't recover it. You may be able to use the SWD pins, which uh, access like the debug interface on the processor, but the QMK firmware disables SWD, and so if it's already disabled SWD, then even that won't work. Um, and because of this, someone on our Discord actually did brick his GMMK. It was an earlier version, not the 2021, but based on the same chip, uh, he permanently bricked it because he accidentally flashed over the bootloader uh, with QMK. And so basically made the chip unable to boot, unable to be restored. Uh, he ended up just taking the chip, ripping it off the board and re-hand wiring it with a custom chip so it, it still is usable as a keyboard but he put a lot of work into basically replacing the processor entirely and rewiring the whole keyboard so that's the danger here is this keyboard it can be permanently bricked and that's an unfortunate part of anything with the 268 chip but we have what we believe to be sort of a solution to this and that is called a jump loader. And the jump loader is something that I wasn't involved with its creation and since I've mostly dealt with 248 I'm not quite as familiar with it. But the people who were originally porting QMK to these Sonics chips were actually dealing with the 268 first and they saw early on that it was brickable and so they came up with this idea of putting a little permanent stub at the beginning of the flash that listens for some kind of key press on connection, like when you first plug it in. And if, if that key is held down, it will go into the bootloader and uh, allow you to recover it. And the idea is that you flash that once and then you never overwrite it again. It's in there permanently. The only reason you'd ever erase that is to go back to the stock firmware. And then anytime you want to update QMK, you flash QMK with a slight offset. And so you never overwrite that jump loader. And it makes it a little bit more of a safe operation to flash. Unfortunately, what that means is we can't use the official Sonics flashing tool. So in the, in the previous video, we used the official Sonics flashing tool downloaded from their website. Uh, we can't use that to flash this keyboard, at least not with the jump loader. So we have our own Python based flashing tool on the Sonics QMK GitHub project 
and we're going to be using that tool to flash this keyboard instead. So in order to flash our GMMK, we're going to need a few things from the Sonics QMK GitHub page. So here's the Sonics QMK GitHub page. It's github.com forward slash Sonics QMK. And then we're going to need a few things. We're first going to need the Sonics Flasher tool, which we use to flash the keyboard. Then we're going to need the jump loader, and then we're going to need the firmware itself. So let's start off by getting the flasher. And all of these are going to be actions builds on GitHub. You'll have to be signed in to GitHub to download these. So if you don't have a GitHub account, it's free to create one. Log in, and then you can go to Actions, and then get the latest master build of the Sonics Flasher tool. So we're just going to click on here on the latest run. Um, we'll scroll, scroll down to Artifacts. And then since I'm using Windows right now, I'm going to go ahead and download Flasher Win. And then we'll just go ahead and save that. And then go back to Sonic's QMK. And we're going to do the same for the Sonic's keyboard bootloader, which is the jump loader I talked about earlier. Um, go to Actions. Also, the master branch. We're going to click on the latest build and download the pre-compiled jump loaders and save that. Now let's go back to Sonic's QMK again. The last thing we need is the firmware itself, so QMK firmware. And again, we're going to go to Actions, but this time we're not downloading from Master. We're going to select Branch over here, and we're going to do SN32 underscore open RGB. And this build is SN32 is for our Sonics port, and then the underscore open RGB this branch has support for the open RGB communication. So we're going to select this and then go ahead and download the latest build of the SN32 open RGB uh, pre-compiled firmware down here. We'll click that and save. So now let's go ahead and extract those files. So let's go to flasher win. We'll right click that and extract it with 7-zip. I think we actually need to extract it again just because of the way that artifacts are packaged. So inside is another zip. So we'll go ahead and extract that. And now we have a folder called Sonic's Keyboard Flasher. And we have an exe file called Sonic's Keyboard Flasher. So now let's go ahead and extract the jump loaders. So We'll use 7-zip, extract, um, and so here's all the jump loader files. Here's our one for our, the glorious GMMK. And then we'll go back to pre-compiled firmware and extract that one as well. And so we have the glorious GMMK full default.bin. This is the firmware we're going to flash. So now we should have all the files we need extracted, and so we should be pretty much ready to go ahead and flash our keyboard. Okay, time to go ahead and actually flash the keyboard. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the flasher. So flasher win, we extracted it, Sonic's keyboard flasher, and then the Sonic's keyboard flasher.exe. Note that I already have the keyboard plugged in to the computer. So I'm going to open Sonic's Keyboard Flasher. And then, as we can see, it's already picked up the keyboard. Um, it says Glorious GMMK. It has the right USB ID, Sonic's USB device. So this is detected as it's running the stock firmware. So now, the first thing we're going to do is reboot it to bootloader. So we're going to click Reboot to Bootloader. And now you can see the LEDs have stopped. That means the keyboard is now in its bootloader mode. We're going to go ahead and refresh. 
and it's still detected, so that's good. Now we're going to go ahead and flash the jump loader to it, and this is super important. You need to flash the jump loader before you flash QMK, otherwise you'll break your keyboard. So flash jump loader, this is a potentially dangerous operation. Do you want to continue? Yes. And now we're going to go to downloads and pre-compiled jump loaders. And we're going to pick the jump loader for the glorious GMMK. And we're going to hit open. And now it has flashed the jump loader. Um, Ingenuity must use the same chip in one of their things because it's popping up, but that's not what this is. We'll reset, or refresh I should say. And now it's detected as an SM32 F268F bootloader. Um, this means the chip is in bootloader mode. It's waiting for us to load some code. Now we can install QMK. So make sure that this is set to OX200 for the offset. This means you're not going to overwrite the jump loader. You're going to flash QMK right after where the jump loader ends. And then we're going to click flash QMK. And then we're going to go up and pick, actually, I forgot to extract the firmware. Well, actually, it does show up here. I did extract it. Uh, there it goes. So pre-compiled firmware. And then we're going to pick glorious GMMK full default.bin. Hit open. And this is flashing. It goes to 100. And now, as you can see, the keyboard is now running QMK. And like in the stock firmware, we use the same key combinations for RGB control in QMK, but they do slightly different effects. So we've got our breathing, rainbow, and then these two just cycle through all of the different QMK effects. And it has some pretty neat ones, like the, these uh, rainbow ones I really like, and the spiral one I really like. So. Yeah, it is now running QMK, and to, just to make sure, um, we can just go ahead in here, and I'm going to try typing something. I only have a few keys installed, so uh, yeah, the keys work, space works, um, I don't have enter, or backspace, I don't have most of the keys installed, so, but that con just confirms that the keyboard is in fact detected and working on the computer. So the next thing I'm going to do is show you how to set up OpenRGB to control the keyboard. So now I want to show you how to set up and configure OpenRGB to communicate with our new QMK GMMK, as well as any other Sonics QMK and a few other QMK boards. And so I'm going to do this with OpenRGB 0.6, which is the currently released version. And in this version, in order to configure QMK keyboards, you have to edit the settings file. And this has been a little bit of a confusion point for a lot of people trying to get this set up, uh, copying this section of code into the config file. In the upcoming 0.7 release, as well as the current pipeline builds, I've added a user interface on the settings tab where you can configure this without diving into the settings file manually. But since 0.6 is the current release, I want to go ahead and show you with the 0.6 release. So over here on the OpenRGB wiki, I have a page for this settings. And I'm going to post a link to this in the video description. But basically what you need to do is copy this block of text here. And you're going to paste it into the configuration file. And it sounds easy, but there's a little bit of a trick to it because if you get the formatting wrong, mainly missing a comma before or after the block of code you've added, then you can it will be invalid and OpenRGB will delete the configuration file and start over and you'll lose your settings. So you have to be careful just a little bit when you're doing this, so that's what I want to show.
So the first thing we're going to do is open up OpenRGB. And since this is a fresh installation, I've deleted all my configs. Um, this is basically like the first time you'd ever install OpenRGB. It's detecting my laptop, um, but it's not detecting the GMMK plugged into my laptop. And that's normal. So what we need to do is go to settings. We're going to open the settings folder. And then we're going to edit openrgb.json. And we're going to open it with, um, we'll just open it with Notepad since everyone has that installed. And so this is the settings file for OpenRGB. And there are several settings that are automatically generated that will be in the default config file. But we want to add this new section. And my, my advice for adding this section is to put it at the top. But you don't want to put it exactly at the top. Like, don't put it on a new line. You want this opening brace here. So put it on line two. So make a new line after this opening brace. And then we're going to go over to the wiki. And we're going to highlight all of this that's in this block of code here, all the way down to this ending brace with the comma. Control C to copy. And we're going to go over to notepad. We're just going to control V, paste that in. Um, we can get rid of that empty line. And so now we have an opening brace, and then it just goes to QMK Open RGB Devices. All of the supported devices in here, we've got our Sonics QMK IDs, so your GMMK and your Red Dragons and other boards that we support will be supported. Um, this here is the GMMK PID. And then we've got our comma here, which will mean that this is a valid file. So let's go ahead and save that. So control S, we've saved it. Now we'll close out of that. And we can go over here and we can close out of the OpenRGB directory. And then we also need to close and reopen OpenRGB. So we're gonna close that and then come down here and reopen it. And with any luck, it should detect, yep, GMMK full. So it has detected the GMMK plugged into the laptop, and it is a QMK OpenRGB device. This means that it is running the QMK version of the, uh, or the OpenRGB version of the QMK firmware, and it has been picked up by OpenRGB. And I can go ahead and change the color and uh, I can confirm that the color has in fact changed. I don't have the camera set up right now, but the color has changed. So here's a quick video, a quick test of keyboard visualizer running on the GMMK. Now, as you can see, there are some issues, especially down here. And I think the issue there is that this particular setup, this laptop, this uh, running Windows, might be transmitting the packets slightly too fast and so some are getting lost and that's why we're getting a little bit of errant communication over there. Uh, this didn't show up in Linux when I was testing it earlier so that's something that we can address. I think we already have a fix for it. It just didn't make it into the firmware yet. But overall yeah OpenRGB is working and as you can see it is responding to my voice which is using keyboard visualizer. So the last thing I want to do before we wrap this up is show you how to flash the keyboard back to stock firmware. So if you don't want QMK anymore, you decide you want the stock firmware back, um, just like in the Red Dragon, as long as you have a backup of the original firmware, you can recover this keyboard back to the stock firmware. But the process is a little different. On the uh, Red Dragon, we used a key bind, a function escape to make it go into bootloader mode. But on the 260, that's where the jump loader comes in. So the jump loader checks a key to be held down when you plug the keyboard in. And if the key is held down, it stays in bootloader mode. So on the jump loader that we flashed to the GMMK, that button is enter. So we're going to hold down the enter key and then plug in the GMMK. And so now we want to go back to um, the flasher and open that up. So flasher 
and Sonic's keyboard flasher.exe. And then refresh, and we can see that we have the bootloader here. The, that means the keyboard is in bootloader mode, so the jump loader did its job, and holding down enter got us into the bootloader. So now we need a copy of the stock firmware. And so we have been keeping track of these on the Sonic's QMK GitHub under the Mechanical Keyboard Database project. And there's a folder in here called Stock FWs, and it's all the stock firmwares that we've collected. So we're going to look under 260, and then down here, Glorious GMMK Full 2021 ANSI RGB260.bin. This is the stock firmware that was dumped from uh, an identical model keyboard from someone on Discord. Um, it's been uploaded here, so we're going to go ahead and download it. So we can just do download and save. So now we just go back to the Sonics keyboard flasher and we're going to click revert to stock firmware. We click that. This is a potentially dangerous operation. Click yes. And now we go back to our downloads folder. We pick this file and just to double check it is size 30 kilobytes which is correct. So we're going to open that, click open, it's going to flash, and then the keyboard should boot back into the stock firmware. And it's doing its spiral, and it's just like it was out of the box again. So that way you can get back to stock if you decide you don't want QMK anymore. And so that's really all I have for this video. Um, we showed you how to install QMK, how to configure OpenRGB, um, told you about the jump loader and then showed you how to revert it back to stock and so anything else if you have any questions you can hop over to our Sonics QMK discord uh, link will be in the description and other than that that's all I have to say so thanks for watching this video and have a good day